Hey guys, what's up? Today we're looking at using the divergence theorem to solve a flux problem through a closed surface. So the problem is find the flux of the field f, which is cosine z plus xy squared i hat plus x e to the negative z j hat plus sine y plus x squared z k hat. We want to find the flux of this field outward through the closed surface s, which is the boundary of the solid enclosed by the paraboloid. The paraboloid is z equals x squared plus y squared, and then we also have a cap at the top of the paraboloid, which is the plane z equals 4. So we want to visualize that. It looks like this surface here. We have the paraboloid opening up from the origin, and then we have the plane z equals 4 right here. So what we want to do is find the flux of the surface, or sorry, flux of the field through the surface that essentially just becomes this closed surface right here. So we want to find the flux outward through that, and that's where the divergence theorem comes in. The divergence theorem says that the flux, the double integral of f dot es over the surface s is equal to the triple integral over the region enclosed by the surface of the divergence of f. So we take the divergence of f, integrate it over the enclosed region. So we need to first take the divergence of this field, and that's going to be del dot f, which is going to be partial partial x of the first component, cos uh, yeah, cosine z plus xy squared. Okay, that's the first part of the divergence, plus partial partial y of the second component j hat component, which is x e to the negative z. That's pretty easy. That's going to be 0 because there's no y anywhere. And then lastly, plus partial partial z of the last component, sine y plus x squared z. All right, so now take the partial derivatives. We get the divergence is equal to derivative with respect to x of this component is just going to give me y squared. So y squared plus 0, because the derivative of this with respect to y is 0, because there's no y anywhere. And then derivative of this last component with respect to z is going to give me x squared. So my divergence is actually x squared plus y squared. So I've got the divergence. Now I need to set up the triple integral over this solid region. So the solid region is um, the, the region bounded by the paraboloid, and then the plane z equals 4. So I need to describe this triple integral bounds. Probably I'm going to use cylindrical coordinates. So I'm going to use cylindrical coordinates to do so. If I look at this paraboloid, just draw it one more time here, z is going to go from 0 up to, uh, sorry, z is going from the paraboloid up to 4. So this is z equals 4. And then this paraboloid is actually z equals r squared. So my bounds for z are going to be from r squared up to 4. So those are my bounds for z. z is going from the paraboloid up to the plane z equals 4. r is going to go from, well, we got to figure out, okay, if this is our top of our paraboloid, then where does this paraboloid intersect the plane z equals 4? Well, if z equals 4, that's x squared plus y squared equals 4. So on that circle, we see that r has its maximum values from 0 to 2. So r is going from 0 to 2 because we go all the way out to that circle of radius 2 when we get up to the top of this paraboloid where we intersect the plane z equals 4. So that's our maximal bounds for r, our maximal bounds for z, and then theta is 0 to 2 pi, because it goes all the way around the z-axis. So theta is 0 to 2 pi. So our triple integral is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral 0 to 2, integral r squared to 4, and then our integrand is x squared plus y squared. And then we have r dz dr d theta. And now all we need to do is convert the integrand to cylindrical coordinates, 
and then integrate. So our triple integral becomes the integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to 2, integral from r squared to 4, and then that x squared plus y squared becomes r squared, and then r dz dr d theta. And what I can do is pull the d theta over with the integral 0 to 2 pi because there's no theta anywhere. So this is going to be integral 0 to 2 pi d theta times integral 0 to 2 integral r squared to 4 r cubed dz dr. So do the integral for theta. We get a 2 pi out front. Integrate the z part. There's no z anywhere, so we just multiply by z. So it's going to be integral 0 to 2 r cubed times z from r squared to 4, and then dr. So this is going to be 2 pi integral 0 to 2. Plug in those bounds for z, we get r cubed times 4 minus r squared dr. Now it's just a nice single integral, um, 2 pi times integral 0 to 2, 4 r cubed minus r to the fifth dr, and that's going to turn out to be 2 pi times, integrate that, we get uh, r to the 4 minus r to the sixth over 6 from 0 to 2, which is going to be 2 pi times 16 minus 64 over 6. And when you reduce that, you'll get 32 pi over 3. And that is the flux out of this field through the surface, so outward through the surface, bounded by this paraboloid z equals x squared plus y squared and the plane z equals 4. So if you had to do the surface integral directly, what you would have to do is find the flux out of the paraboloid and then find the flux upward through the disk at the top of the paraboloid. So if we just kind of go back to the original, we would have to find the flux through the paraboloid out down here and then find the flux through the paraboloid that is the, the cap of the paraboloid. So there are actually two surfaces. You would have to find the flux outward. You have like an S1 and an S2. So it's actually two separate surfaces that make up our solid, or our surface S, which is bounding the solid region. So anyway, that's how we do the divergence theorem.